All right, I just made a front loop um, for a rope to um, hook on to. Um, and now I'm welding these handles that I made about a month ago on, and there'll be one over on the other side. So I just got it tacked with the uh, spool gun. Now I'm going to switch over to TIG and finish welding. Well, I got the um, the engine compartment size finalized because um, I got this 90 for my intake. Um, so I welded in the, um, well, attacked in the top. And now I'm just trying to transfer the, um, that line down to the bottom. So hopefully this will give me something accurate. Um, I got a straight edge going from the stern to the new support that's flush with the um, top of the gunnel there. And then I got a framing square coming down so I can hopefully transfer that front line down to the stringers. Um, and then I can figure out where to weld in the uh, floor and where this wall, the um, bulkhead wall is going to hit down on the stringer. So hopefully uh, this works out. Well, I made a template here, um, which is the shape of the side of the boat, um, and I have what the engine compartment divider, the bulkhead is what I'm calling it. Um, I have what it should be, and uh, I'm hoping that my measurements are right, and I don't have much room for um, error, so hopefully I don't end up having to buy another piece of plywood. Um, yeah, let me get this cut out now.
cool. There it is, and if I did my measurements right, it's going to fit the boat. I cut it about uh, a sixteenth in on all the lines, so it should be an eighth short overall for the whole um, boat, which hopefully means that it will fit, but it'll have some play in it. So let's give that a shot. Well, I kind of surprised myself. Um, it fits perfect. I actually had to take it out and take a little bit off of these top corners, but um, yeah, it is a nice fit all the way around, um, down the floor and up the other side. So what's going to happen now is I'm going to coat this in epoxy. Um, it's actually a Bondo epoxy resin. Um, <clears throat> so that should hopefully waterproof it and then um, it'll get painted later. But uh, yeah, it's very nice. All right, so I got the um, bulkhead square now and um, I got where, where it meets the hull lined. So um, I made a whole bunch of tabs. So I'm just going to weld those um, along that line, and then I can bolt in the bulkhead. Yeah, it turned out perfect. Alright, so uh, I got both the pieces of plywood cut and some of the tabs welded on to attach them. Um, and I just put the first coat, well, not just, it's it's set up now, but I put the first coat of epoxy on the plywood um, to waterproof it. So it's also going to be painted. Um, but the nap roller left a bunch of stuff in it. So uh, I actually have to sand this down and uh, do a second epoxy coat. And then, um, and then they'll be done and ready for paint. I got the bulkhead and engine cover um, epoxy finished. And, um, I got it bolted up into its tabs there. Um, I still have to build a frame for here. Uh, I have to actually pick up another piece of aluminum to do that. But it's nice seeing what the um, final layout's going to be. Um, I also cut the front floor piece. Um, and I opted to angle it down in the front there rather than having it come out even just because I wanted more leg room up there. So yeah, coming along nice. It's kind of neat to see it coming together like this. All right, I got the front floor bracket um, welded in place. And I got four tabs on the hull that will hold the front where it angles down. Um, anyway, I got the sheet metal cut out and I just have to drill and tap um, some holes and get it mounted. So let me get that done now. All right, I got everything um, drilled and tapped. And um, it's all marked up on here and drilled and uh, it's ready to be installed. I'm still waiting on some bolts, so I can only put a few in for right now, just to hold it down. So the front floor is installed. Everything's drilled and tapped. Um, I only have six bolts in there now. I have another order in for a bunch more. I keep running out of materials where they're taking a lot longer to get. So um, all the flooring's in. I still have to drill and tap this back floor. Um, yeah, and I need to put the proper screws in this floor, and I have the hatch cover for that. But um, all the fabrication here is done. All right, well, <clears throat> I made a, um, a cradle. It's tacked up right now for the intake. Um, and this fits right in there, and I'll strap it in. Um, there's many reasons I did that. I kept going back and forth on just coming out at a 90 and doing a K&N filter. Um, but there's a whole bunch of mounts for the electronics on built in to this that otherwise I would have had to build. And 
I want to make it as quiet as possible, so this should really muffle the intake. Um, I'm still going to chop this off and add a cannon filter to the end there, but um, yeah, I think this is going to work out. And if it doesn't, <clears throat> then after running it for a season, I can take the air box out and um, just replumb it for just an air filter coming right out of the intake there. All right, so this is why I really wanted to try to work with this, is everything mounts to the air box. Um, and I'm going to have a second breaker panel over there, and the battery will be right down there. So by using that, um, it just is going to make everything nice and organized, and all the plugs are going to basically be the right length for what I need. I'll have to lengthen a few, but um, it, you know, not as much as if I just put all those up on the wall, so, or on the bulkhead, but anyway. All right, I just welded up the um, intake tube. I think this is the last of the um, tube that I'm gonna need to do. It's gonna connect the um, silencer box with the, um, the EFI module right here that I have a 90 on. So um, once it cools off, I'll clean it up and then um, give it a fit, test fit. All right, so I finished the um, building the frame for the engine cover, um, and I got all the hardware on it. I really didn't record any of that, but it turned out really nice. So what I'm going to do now is weld all the tabs in to keep the lid from falling down. And I made this little jig that spaces them down the right distance from the top. So I can just hold them there and then tack them. So let me get some of those attached. All right, so today I'm making a bunch of little brackets to secure things. Um, this one's gonna be for the intake. Uh, both ends are on a flexible um, connection, but I just don't want that hard tube to be rattling around so much. So I'm gonna secure it to the bulkhead and then the engine can flex and that's fine. There's, there's some play over here and the um, air box can flex and that's fine. Um, and I'm doing the same with the exhaust. Actually, I already tacked one bracket in. There's gonna be another bracket on the other side. That way, well, it's already more secure, but this was really wobbly and I just, you know, the, uh, the engine can flex and the hull can flex, but I just don't want stress on those two joints to just continuously flex. So that will at least be somewhat more rigid and held in place. All right, it's been a night of kind of just cleaning things up. Um, I got some brackets on uh, the exhaust and the intake, and I had just tacked this up before. Um, this is the um, holder for the air silencer, the intake silencer, and I finally just pulled it back out and finished welding it. So that is done. And I got the hooks for the bungees mar marked and put on. So that's done. And now I'm going to put all of this back in again. Well, I finished the intake and it turned out really nice. The um, Canon fil air filter fits on the end there perfectly. I had to cut it off and um, shave it down. Uh, I made this bracket and it's bolted to the bulkhead. Um, that will keep this stable. Uh, this has flex here at that joint, and the engine shouldn't move. Um, it's you know on rubber mounts, but even if it vibrates a little bit, um, there's some flex here, so it should be fine. Uh, I just didn't want this thing flopping around up here or putting stress on uh, this boot here or this boot and potentially cracking it over time. So I just wanted to bolt it down. And uh, I got the brackets on the exhaust. It's, uh, it still has some play in it, but it's more sturdy than it was, so I like that. Um, yeah, so it turned out really nice. I think next I have to mount the electrical box, which I kind of marked the top corner there. That's going to be a secondary fuse box. Most of the electronics attached to the air cleaner here, or it's a silencer box. There's... Um, yeah, a bunch of amounts on it for 
pretty much all the electronics. And if I put them where they were in the SeaDo, I don't have to extend as many wiring harnesses. So that's the route I'm going. <laughs> all right, I finished this floor. Um, it was done. I just needed to drill and tap the holes. And I cut out the hole for this access, which um, will be a bilge pump right there. So I'll be able to uh, get in there if I need to for any reason, if it gets clogged. So that's really the only reason that's there. Uh, yeah, so I'm still waiting on some fasteners to bolt it in for good. So I have the bulkhead out, and um, I went ahead and fit the lid. So that is pretty much done. And it turned out great. It's um, sturdy enough to walk on. I still need to get some pins to hold that. Uh, and I have some struts coming for it, but this is just 16th wall, one inch square tube. And I added that to the half inch plywood that is epoxy coated and there'll be a uh, hydro turf on top of it. So it's very rigid and I have a bunch of these little tabs and I spaced them down an extra eighth of an inch so I could put some rubber padding on them uh, just to keep vibration down. So that turned out really nice. And, yeah, excited to get that taken care of. There'll be kill mat on the inside of it for some um, extra soundproofing. Since I have the uh, bulkhead out, I decided to get the secondary fuse panel installed. So it's going to go right there, and the door is going to open down. So it'll be right next to the air silencer. This blue C system is going to be inside of it, and I have some cable glands. So I have a bunch of, uh, there's six circuits on that. And I plan on doing, well, five circuits now, and I'll have an extra circuit if I need it. So I'll have a bilge, an accessory circuit, a sonar circuit, um, and then front and rear lighting circuits. And then I might do something else like an interior light. I'm not sure if I'll need any of that stuff, but. Uh, yeah, just isolating everything. It'll be in a waterproof box, so low maintenance. I don't need to worry about, uh, you know, any moisture corroding it. Uh, it'll be all marine-grade wiring that's going to be tinned, uh, soldered, all connections with silicone and heat shrink. So this thing should just be bulletproof. All right, so there it is enclosed. It's, uh, that's right side up. It's going to open down. It's already a marine uh fuse panel but I wanted to put it in a completely watertight enclosure just for well I just added protection all right I just wanted to do a quick video of where I'm at right now I just put everything back on um, and it looks incredible so I mean I keep fabricating pieces bolting them on then I usually have to remove them work on them and a lot of times I leave things off so um, the engine hatch is done. The fuel system is completely done. Um, the exhaust system is completely done. And the air intake is completely done. So I just put the um, a fuse box on for a little sub panel for or sub fuse box for some accessory circuits. There's another fuse box from the sea that goes clips on right there. Um, but yeah, it's looking good. All right, so I made a transducer mount uh, for the side scanning sonar transducer. So this actually goes through the swim deck and comes out down here. It's retractable. And uh, I saw this in someone else's video. So I'll be able to retract the uh, transducer up to protect it. And it'll be pinned. I'll have some holes drilled in here with a couple locations. So uh, I can pull it up and stick the pin in to run it with uh, protecting the transducer. And then when I want to use the sonar, I can just drop it down and uh, do the scanning. So I like how it turned out. Um, I need to get the pins before I decide how big of a hole I need to drill. So once I find those, I'll get the holes drilled. Alright, so um, I'm trying to get these handles on. 
I originally made these uh, square ones and I just did not like the way they looked because it just didn't match what I currently had on here. So I remade them with this uh, one inch round to match the handles that I made uh, about a month ago. So there'll be a handle there and then this rack for strapping gear down on top of the engine hatch. And then the same handle and rack on this other side. And that matches um, what I have up front here. So. I'm gonna go ahead and get this, I got them tacked. I'm gonna tack up the other side and then I gotta take some stuff apart cause it's gonna dump a lot of heat in. So I gotta take all this wood off and the gas tank and stuff and finish welding them. Well, I got them all tacked up. I think I like how it looks. Uh, so I gotta take the bulkhead off cause it's really gonna heat up uh, the aluminum there on the corner and burn the wood. So. I gotta take all that back apart and uh, take the seats out and then finish welding it. Alright, I got this one completely welded up. Uh, I'm waiting for my torch to cool off. Uh, I'm running 125 amps to take this and um, it just heats up my torch. I'm not sure exactly what the duty cycle is, but it's too hot to touch through the gloves, so just giving it a chance to cool off. And then, uh, I'll move over and finish this side. Yeah, looking great. Alright, so my goal here is going to be to make a clip that essentially works like this and goes on the, gar the back of the garment here and slides around there. So I'm going to take some measurements and see if I don't have some aluminum sheet that I can't fabricate to uh, replace this. It, I keep breaking them and uh, it's going to end up going on this RAM mount that is then going to be mounted in this area. So, um, yeah, let me see if I can't make something that would hold my GPS a little better. Well, this is what I came up with. Uh, it doesn't look pretty, but it gets the job done. Uh, I didn't, I had to be real quick with my tacks on the back here because these RAM mounts covered in rubber. So I just had to tack it quick, but uh, the, the mount's made with three sheets of aluminum, different varying widths, and it fits on here perfect. So it fits on here perfect and uh, basically does what the old one does, but this one will never break. So I think it's going to be a great fix for that problem. All right, well I got it mounted and it looks pretty good come off and the mount it's obviously a ram mount so it's fully adjustable I have the safety lanyard I've lost a GPS in a lake before falling out of a boat so I always clip it in so I'm gonna drill a hole here in the gunnel and have a little clip just so if anything happens it's 
protected. All right, well, now I'm gonna drill some holes to get this sonar uh, installed. Well, I got the Hummingbird sonar mounted, uh, and I got my whole dash laid out. And I'm not gonna cut it yet. I think I'm gonna wait on it a night and think on it and come back before I start cutting and drilling. And then, uh, got my GPS mount. So it's coming along nice. Looking forward to um, getting the dash laid out and cut out and everything fitted. So I took everything out and I'm going to finish welding those engine mounts, but I'm getting really close to flipping it over to do uh, UHMW. And yeah, all the pieces are mostly fabricated. I have the engine and everything over here and then a whole bunch more stuff just in piles. Um, yeah, so it's getting real close. Uh, just a few more things to drill and cut. Uh, then it's flipping over. Well, I got the pneumatic cylinder installed. Turned out nice, so this is officially done. I just have to put the kill mat underneath the uh, bottom of the lid. All right, well, I got my through haul fittings in. Uh, Two are for two different bilge pumps, and one is for the coolant um, for the engine. So they're actually really nice anodized aluminum. They're from a company called Thrasher Products, and I want to say they're about $12 to $13 each, uh, which compared to the plastic ones that are similar value, um, these are just really nice. Let me get one on now. So yeah, all aluminum, just really nice, well made. All right, so I got the um, battery cut off. So this will be a, where I can turn off the power basically to the whole boat um, for storage and winterization and stuff. I have a tender that's gonna be on it too, but that'll just allow me to completely disconnect everything. I got it flipped over to uh, do the UHMW on the bottom. So a couple of my neighbors came and I took some of the scrap from the crate and made a quick stand for it. It's a little high, but should be doable. Um, yeah, so I'm going to start drilling a whole bunch of holes and tapping a whole bunch of holes and hopefully get this plastic on. So just started the UHMW. Um, I actually moved it outside because it's sunny and I can get it to heat up and uh, it's bending a lot easier. So um, I'm just starting trying to get the layout right, make sure I don't, you know, get it all on straight. But so far it's looking good. Hopefully once I get the layout going, I can cruise right through it. All right, so UHMW is done. I did my best to plastic weld a strip in the gap there, and I got good adhesion on both sides. If it does end up tearing out, um, I'll probably just have to get, actually get it plastic welded by somebody. Uh, there's 182 bolts. I went through three taps, and uh, one of my taps, that was the last good hole, and it stripped that one and stripped that one, um, and then I had to switch to a new tap. So I got two that are stripped that, um, I'll just have to bolt, you know, when I put the nuts on the other side. But it turned out pretty good. So the uh, engine hatch um, lid is coated now in the kill mat, and so is the um, bulkhead. 
So I'm going to flip them over and prime them now. All right, so what I'm calling the primer is on. It's actually this uh, Total Boat Army Green aluminum boat paint. It's kind of a pea green color, so I'm using it as a primer. And um, I'm going to use a camo paint. So I'm trying to decide between Rust-Oleum and uh, Krylon. I kind of liken the Krylon better with how it goes on, but um, it should be this green with then some khaki and then some dark brown and some black mixed in. Um, so yeah, this uh, should hopefully be dry enough to paint in a day or two. Uh, looks like we might be having some rain though, so it might be later this weekend before I can get around to it. So I also got a lot of the kill mat installed. And so I just need to finish all that up too. Well, I just put the uh, epoxy coat on the pump because it, um, it was pitted. So all these parts are drying. Um, and then hopefully I can get the second coat on tomorrow. And the uh, BRP plates over there. These are going to be the uh, stencils for um, the camo paint job that I'm going to do. So it's actually raining out, so I, uh, I clipped them and I'm putting them underneath the halogen to dry. So um, the boat's all primed and dry. I'm starting to tape it off and then I'm actually going to tape tarps all the way around it and uh, paint it inside here so there's no wind and uh, obviously no moisture. So let me get to that. All right, I got about half the tarps up. Um, just have to do this side and then hopefully I can start getting my base coats down. All right, well the paint is done. Um, I like it. It's a four color rattle can camo and um, I didn't paint the whole deck because uh, HydroTurf is going to go on that end up on top there. Alright, well I made some cardboard templates um, for the HydroTurf and I just got the first piece cut and put in and it looks really good. I'm looking forward to getting the rest of it put on there. There'll be another piece on either side. Um, and then up on the top deck and on the flooring. So let me get more of this stuff done. All right, well, I forgot to take this video the other day, but um, I wanted to show the finished hydro turf. So the back deck is all done and on top here, and then a piece on either side, and then the flooring. and also the engine cover is all done. All right, well, I'm soldering the wires that are gonna be connected to these sub fuse box for all my accessory circuits. Um, just soldering, crimping, heat shrinking, and then they'll go in these connectors that are all waterproof. So I'm gonna basically, there'll be a, a plug here and here, and um, that'll allow me to unclip my wire harness and take this bulkhead out if I need to get to the engine or anything. So I won't have a bunch of wires that are just going all over the boat and then screwed onto the terminals there. So that's the idea of these connectors. All right, so that's done. All the fuses are wired up to the connectors and everything is soldered, well, crimp soldered and heat shrunk. So. That cover goes on it. That's it. There it is right side up on the bulkhead. Alright, so the pump is painted and I'm getting ready to put it all back together. I didn't paint it to look good. Uh, I actually, that gray stuff is a uh, aluminum epoxy primer. It's a two-part um, thicker 
type of paint. And the reason I did it was that uh, it had some pitting in it because the first owner of the sea dew left it in brackish water in um, the Chesapeake Bay area. So it had some pitting and I just wanted to make sure that that oxidation was sealed so it wouldn't continue in fresh or brackish water where I'm going to take this. So I did a epoxy coat um, on it and then I just quickly spray painted it just so it wasn't the gray color. So I fully expect a lot of this to wear off and get dinged up, but hopefully it'll protect it for a while. All right, well there it is back together. Um, I'm going to be a little worried about the geometry of the uh, the steering and the trim cables. Um, this is exactly how it was on the Sea-Doo. Uh, I just hope with what I have to work with, with the new control cables, it'll work out. But I guess I'll find out when I get those in and uh, start to get this installed. Got the uh, pump protector finished and uh, welded on. So and I had some extra UHMW, so I went ahead and coated the bottom. And uh, it's a good amount higher than the bottom of the hull, so I don't think there's going to be any issue with it. But it'll certainly protect that pump when I, um, I have no doubt, it'll be backing into rocks and stuff uh, with what I use this for. All right, I got the dry box in. Um, I just cut up some scraps of extra hydro turf to kind of fit in there to make it padded so when my phone or whatever's in there it doesn't bang around on the metal. And I'm trying something. Uh, I coated the top of the aluminum in duct tape so when I put the floor on and I bolt it down, I hope that dampens some of the vibration. Not sure if it'll help, but I don't think it's going to hurt. So we'll see how that goes. The transducer is mounted and the through hole fitting is uh, sealed with some Sika uh, marine sealant. And it's nice and it can get up for storage, so it should be well protected, uh, you know, from rocks and logs and stuff. And I can drop it back down for use. All right, so getting ready to put the engine in. Um, Got the mounts all installed, so hopefully it sits in. I got the backing plate Sika epoxied in, or marine sealant. So that should all be done. So hopefully it goes in smoothly and lines up nice. All right, well, the uh, engine is in, and I'm working on the final alignment for it and getting the proper shims in place. Um, it's looking good should all be aligned right now and I got the pump in trying to set up the uh, in play for uh, the drive shaft all right the engine is bolted down and I got nice alignment um, nice and smooth so very happy with how that turned out the drive shaft is installed now with a new inner boot and the outer boot I'm reusing. Uh, it's very, very hard to get that boot squished in enough to um, crimp down the clamp on the inner boot. Um, but I packed it full of grease so the um, crankshaft splines are loaded with the proper um, grease that was in the uh, service manual. Um, so yeah, that is a huge step in finalizing this whole project. Uh, I'm really happy to finally get that part done. All right, well, the uh, fuel system is now completely installed. Got the tray bolted to the holes I put in the stringer. Um, and I sealed the gas cap with Sika so water doesn't fall down into the hull through it. And uh, yeah, got all the hose clamps tightened and the straps put on. So next is the exhaust. The exhaust is now bolted in and installed. So um, turned out well. Next up is the bulkhead, which has the intake bracket and the electrical sub panel. So let me go grab that. All right, well, I got the back wiring harness in and it's all mounted on the um, air silencer. Uh, the only issue I actually had was the um, 
the uh, coolant reservoir won't fit anymore, and it's because I had to move the ECU module over, and um, it's supposed to go right there, and it just won't clear with those clips, but that's no big deal. Um, I'll probably just mount it either up on the um, bulkhead there or somewhere in the back here. Um, be really easy to make a mount for that. So I'm going to be doing splicing harnesses and electrical work for uh, the next couple of evenings, but the battery's down there. Uh, I just have to splice a few connections and I'll actually be able to turn power onto this harness. Um, and then I can get the uh, can do software set up and try to reprogram this thing and remove a few of the options. All right, so I'm uh, extending part of the wiring harness. This is the plug for the um, fuel pump. So um, extending it off of the main harness because I moved the gas tank to the other side of the boat. So um, and I'm also running the start of my first um, accessory or custom circuit to the rear light. So that's going to be run into this sub panel. Um, and then there'll be a switch for it up on the dash up there. Well, I got the battery and all the main wires connected and the stock harness plugged in. I still have to extend it up to the dash. I'm still waiting on steering components, but um, I think I'm going to try to get this reprogrammed for removing IBR. So if all goes well, I'm going to put this key in here. And that should have powered up the um, whole harness. And then if I put this on, I can't remember, it might power up the console. Hang on. Maybe I have to push the start stop once. Hmm. I'm not sure what's that, that is. Let me be, get back to it. All right, I just didn't push the start stop hard enough. Um, yeah, I hear the fuel pumps running. So the extended harness, uh, that is an IBR uh, error code. Or it could be low fuel, but I see the IBR is on. I don't even have it hooked in. That's the um, IBR plug. So I'm going to get my um, diagnostic tools hooked up and see if I can't get that disabled. So the dash is drilled. Um, and <laughs> I've made up this design that uh, to sandwich the um, cluster from the Sea-Doo in between two pieces of aluminum with some rubber padding so that it's just kind of floating there but it should be really tight um, so yeah that uh, glue is pretty much set up so I'm gonna unscrew that and there's a back plate that has more rubber on it uh, but first I'm gonna actually paint the dash so that that should completely finish all of the painting and then um, I'm gonna get to the electrical all right, so I got the base coat down. Um, I think I'm going to do two of these, and then uh, when that's all dry, I'll start doing the same camo pattern that I did everywhere else. All right, so I got the cluster in. Um, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. And if you look behind, the way I did it was I have rubber padded on the front, and on the back um, and then I cut this back plate and so those nuts on the back are locking it in so yeah it seems to um, be held in place pretty nice so I like it alright so the dash is done um, all my circuits are wired up so that's the headlight that's the uh, light in the back and that's my accessory, um, which is a voltmeter and USB charger. 
Um, and then that's my sonar, which is currently off, and that's the bilge, which I haven't hooked up yet. And then ignition, start, and then the security key. But turned out really well. And um, tomorrow I'm going to extend the start, stock harness and remove a few things from it. And um, then the wiring should mostly be done. All right, well, I just finished extending the stock wiring harness. So um, I'm about to wrap it up and then get it in the boat. So I was able to get rid of a few of the plugs. This one's no longer going to be used. It's only going to be that one. Um, and then I just have to wire up the ignition and see if all the connections are correct. So the heat exchanger arrived today and I got it put in. All the lines are run. I just have a little bit of wire management to do, but um, I'm going to fill it up with antifreeze and try to give it a start. So let's see how that goes. All right, so um, it's time to try to give it a start. Uh, pretty nervous about this. I've been double checking in my head if I have everything um, hooked up right. Um, the drivetrain's hooked up and everything, the fuel system's all hooked up. I don't foresee any big problems. So uh, give me one second and I'll give this a start. this uh, manual bilge all right so I finally got the steering system installed I ended up using uh, mini jets bracket and it turned out amazing it was very simple to install and adjust and uh, I went through uh, I've got a 13 foot cable from Minijet as well, and that's the cable that's long enough to go through the gunnel um, and then back and connect to the steering linkage back here. Uh, so it's just a, a hole drilled in the transom um, and then sealed with some Sikaflex. And um, yeah, just connected to the nozzle. All right, well. I've been slacking on taking video, but um, I made this trim handle, and so that's the stock steering cable, and it goes through the bulkhead back to um, the IBR trim bracket. So it's actually the IBR bracket, but I'm using it for trim, and I'll show that in one second. Jet build is done, and uh, let me grab the camera and show you around. Couldn't be happier with uh, how everything turned out. Hydroturf floors. Um, these are actually some skid steer seats. I have a dry compartment in there that's relatively big. Uh, and then the rear floor, <clears throat> that compartment is where the bilge pumps are.
everything fit really nice. I even had some spare room where I actually, all of my boats, I put a custom tool bag together for them that will have everything, every size and only every size that I need just for that boat. Uh, so that's what's going to go in this compartment here.